in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. May God bless you, Reverend Godwin Aban, your dear wife. Let's honor them in Jesus' name. One more time, I'd like us to pray. Father, speak to me again this morning. My heart is open to receive in the name of Jesus. Is someone praying? Speak to me again. The word of the Lord can come again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. We thank God for this conference and the mighty things that um, that God has been doing through his servants and I was so blessed again hearing the man of God charge our hearts because most times believers hear the word but we are not careful and attentive to do that which we have heard the Bible says they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. It is important that we not only hear, but we obtain grace from God to walk in keeping with that which we have heard. I felt very strongly in my heart right from the beginning of my session to share what I'm about to share to be a brief charge as a final note and um, one of the major hindrances one of the major hindrances to becoming all that God has destined for you to be aside from demonic attacks aside from ignorance and all of these aspects that we've dealt with is the spirit of fear I want you to please pay attention, lend me your attention for a few minutes as we trust God by his word to bring to a permanent end this cancer that has destroyed great destinies. Hallelujah. I will fear no evil. Please prophesy to yourself. Say, I will fear. Psalm 23. Help us, O God, in the name of Jesus. Psalm 23. psalm 23 we begin from verse 1 it says the lord is my shepherd i shall not want we're reading the whole scripture he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restored my soul he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake Verse 4, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And that my lack of fear is based on this revelation. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 5, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Say amen. amen. Joshua chapter 1, please, and verse 9. After the death of Moses, Joshua was now saddled with the responsibility to assume leadership, leading God's people into the promised land. And naturally, he was afraid because those people were a stiff-necked people. They could be rebels at any time. And the Lord was charging him, verse 9 now, 1 verse 9, Joshua, have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage? It says, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Hallelujah. Can we read one more scripture? Hebrews chapter 2, please, from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. The Bible says, For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that hath the power of death. That is the devil. 15 is the verse of emphasis. Next verse, please. It says, And to deliver them who through fear could be fear of anything, in this case, the fear of death, where all their lifetime subject to bondage, there is a relationship between fear and bondage. Are we together? That one of the ways that a man can be kept in bondage, and you know bondage symbolizes confinement. There is no motion under bondage. It says to deliver them who through fear have all their lifetime. That means a man's entire lifetime can be under siege. Fear, I wrote here, is both a spiritual condition and a psychological condition. Please pay attention. When it has to do with the subject of fear, there is a spiritual dimension to fear and there is a psychological dimension to fear. May I back up a bit and tell you that most people have not been able to live on common lives and destinies, not just because they have not heard from God, not just because their prophet has not spoken over them, but they have not sustained the courage and the revelation to exert dominion over the spirit of fear. Hallelujah. The great man Gideon in the Bible was a man who had the destiny of a warrior and a leader and a victor. But fear kept him in the place of hiding. It is amazing how fear can keep a great destiny, an enviable destiny. And you would think time will naturally erode fear. The Bible says those who through all their lifetime, that means from birth till your final transition, you can be a victim of fear. There are many businesses today that should have been founded that should be blessing the world. There are many mantles today that most people do not have the courage to receive. There are many graces today that many people have been able, unable to take. There are many giant strides in ministry, in business, in life, in destiny, financially. Many people have been kept grounded even to their detriment because of this one factor of fear. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. May I please request that we read it together. Ready? One, two, read. For God had not given us the spirit of fear. Hold on. One more time. For God had not given us. One more time to that verse again. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Look how serious fear is. It takes three spiritual forces to bring it to end. Are you getting me now? Don't you downplay the wicked ministry of that spirit. That it, it doesn't just take casting away. What kind of a mysterious manifestation is this? 
that it will take power then it will take the rebel then to be part of creating our realities listen carefully the purpose of fear is to gain access to our imaginations and our expectations and then to be part of creating our realities job chapter 3 and verse 25 the purpose of fear is to gain access to our imaginations and expectations and then to be part of creating our realities i'd like you to please read this scripture is projected ready one to read for the thing which i greatly feared is come upon me and that which i was afraid of is come to me one more time for the thing which i greatly feared is come upon me and that which i was afraid of as a general rule the bible and even science and psychology all of these forces agree as to how physical realities manifest to an individual that everything starts from the realm of the spirit through your thoughts and imaginations do we agree on that hallelujah that the realities that manifest physically are only a physical expression of your imaginations and your thoughts in fact the bible tells us that just like your physical prayer your mindset and your thoughts and your imaginations are also prayer warriors and that god can answer both now unto him the bible says ephesians 3 20 who is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all we ask and think if I say sit here or sit here, it means both of them have similar values, even if not equal values. So if my prayer life says, God help me, and my imagination says, God forget about it, it says God has the power to answer both. Are you getting me now? So if I want to be great, a great destiny starts with a great mindset and a great thought life. A defeated destiny starts with a defeated mindset and a defeated thought life. Satan knowing this, that our physical lives are products of the quality of our thoughts and imagination, would now introduce the spirit of fear to be part of the building process of your imagination so that what happens in your life naturally becomes a product of your fearful thoughts. Job was saying here that the thing I feared most, that means when Satan wanted to destroy Job, he did not just start destroying people physically. He came to his thoughts. So one day, this is how everything will live. So one day, my glory will fade away. And he would see his children dancing and say, so one day, I would sit down and mourn. And he did not know that his thoughts had the power to attract the physical equivalent of what he was thinking. Are we together now? The thing that I feared most has come upon me. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. Here is wisdom from scripture. For as he thinketh in his heart. The Bible didn't say so he will become. He says so he is. So, so is he. It literally equates your current condition with your thought life that means your life today in all its summation physically financially and so on and so forth is a messless report card showing us the quality of your thinking before now or otherwise your physical environment cannot be anything different from the quality of your thought life this is true even the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That Jesus did not just excel because he was the son of God. There was something about his thoughts and imagination that kept him in a position of perpetual victory. I once heard a story, very interesting story. I don't know whether it's, it's real or fiction, but it blessed me. There was someone who was going to accomplish an impossible feat. Please listen carefully. And he was to climb a very high tower. And many people had attempted to climb, but the, the ladder or so was not really strong. And so it could knock them down. 
And then the person began to climb. And when he got midway, the people under saw him. And they began to talk to him. They were crying and some of them were lamenting and beckoning on him to come. And they noticed he was smiling and he kept climbing. He kept climbing. And they were already afraid. Some of them were wondering what kind of death this person was going to die. And he kept climbing. And finally he overcame all that barrier and got to the top. And in congratulating him later, they got to find out that the reason why he arrived there was because he was deaf. The man was a deaf man. So he was not hearing what they were saying. So his mindset told him they were cheering him. Please, you can make it. Based on that imagination, it gave him the fuel to finish. Whereas what they were actually saying is you will die. You better come down. That deafness became his advantage to win. The first thing that happened to man to destroy him. Satan did not just come to Adam and Eve and then in one day they fell. No. His first assignment was to corrupt their imagination and to corrupt their thought life. The Bible is written in summary. So you would think the conversation just happened in five minutes and then that was the end of it. No. It was persistent suggestion. And the Bible says after Adam and Eve fell, when the Lord came in the cool of the day and said, Adam, where are you? Adam said, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. Next question, who told you? You have allowed another influence other than my voice into the space of your mind. Who told you you cannot be a champion? Who to the Bible says, Paul was speaking, he says, there is, as it were, many voices. And says, none of them is without signification. That means the voice of your past, the voice of your background. There are many people today who would have been champions. If only they did not have ungodly teachers who call them certain names. You rejected it, but it still entered. You, it's not for people like you. This is the plague of Africa. Either because of the color of your skin or your sociological context, we believe we can never truly rise to maximize destiny. And even though sometimes we may verbally confess it, but the truth is that our minds have become stumbling blocks, refusing to allow us rise. Are we together? Recall my story again. These people were calling him down. Come down. Some were standing and even begging. And based on his mindset, because they were, he was deaf, his mind told him they are cheering you, don't fail them. They are looking up to you. And he kept pushing till he won. Are we blessed? The purpose of fear, I repeat again, is to gain access to our imagination and expectations. And then to now participate in creating that negative reality. Please write this very quickly. There are three dimensions of fear we must overcome to become uncommon and to excel in life and destiny. There are three dimensions of fear. If you cannot conquer this dimension of fear, believe me, even if one gallon of oil is poured on you, you may not imagine much. Number one, the first dimension of fear you must conquer is the fear of the past. Please write it down. The first dimension of fear, you must sustain the courage to conquer their champion, their destiny changer, their trailblazer, their man of God, their potential billionaire. The first dimension of fear you must conquer is the fear of the past. Someone say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the past is past. That the past is past the fear of the past Philippi Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13 the fear of the past brethren I count myself I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind so you don't press until you can forget some things. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before. Verse 14. It says, I press. 
I press by forgetting. Not just by going forward. I press by forgetting. Now, let me tell you something. The past is a very jealous dimension. It always wants to relieve itself. The past, your yesterday, will always want to find expression again. Past failures, past experiences, past defeats. Before you got born again, you were under the siege of darkness. And chances are excellent that the memory of your defeat still resides within your mind. And when you want to make giant strides, here comes Satan again. Through the spirit of fear, did you not fail before? Have you changed? Is it not your same name? Are you not the one who failed in school? Are you not the one who failed in destiny? When you registered that company, was it not in shame you returned? And you will return back to status quo. Assignment of fear done. Is someone hearing? This is very important. The spirit of fear. The fear of the past. There are several people who cannot go forward because of the fear of yesterday. Yesterday is a jealous realm. It wants to relieve itself in your today and relieve itself in your tomorrow. But you have to, you have to, God created that tripartite nature of time to give you peace and to give you rest. He separated time into three dimensions. Yesterday or past, today or present, tomorrow or future. That, that tripartite separation was to be able to grant you peace. So that the version of me yesterday may not be the version today. You may be talking to the wrong person. Are we together now? Can I tell you, the 2021 version of you is not the version sitting down here. So don't you allow the failure of last year. When the devil is speaking, you may wear the same cloth. You may have the same voice. You may have whatever. But you can tell the devil, go back to last year and talk to that version. But as far as this is concerned, you are talking to one who has heard the word. You, have, you are talking to one who has changed. Hallelujah. Do you know the reason why many people do not rise in Africa and even in Nigeria? They are surrounded by environments that knew them all their lives. So when you want to do something, people say from where? Where did this start? That's why usually one of the ways that God raises champions is to take them out of their default environment into a strange environment that does not know anything about your history so that you can now begin to rise and thrive. Why do you think they told everybody, he said, kill everybody in Jericho and save Rahab because this woman will one day be the great grandmother of Jesus so that nobody will be connected who knows her history, that she was once a prostitute. If someone had survived, you would say, you don't know who this woman is. There are many people who cannot rise because of yesterday. The limitation of yesterday. You were downsized from work. And so when you start a company and someone sees your face, they now laugh and say, look at somebody who could not move from this level to this level is now starting a real estate firm. Let's sit down and watch wonders. I have good news for you. It is true that Jesus died, but he didn't die forever. He only died for three days. Don't be talking about the Jesus who died when he has already come back to life. Are we together now? There are many of you, your yesterday may not be anything about to write home about full of poverty, failure, defeat, ignorance. Some of you may not even be born again at, as at yesterday. But thank God for the gift of today. Today is the remedy for yesterday. Today is the bridge between yesterday and tomorrow. Every time you wake up in the morning, know that God gave you a gift. A gift to correct yesterday and rewrite it in tomorrow. Is someone learning? Yes, sir. The company called 7-Up, you know how they derived their name 7-Up? 7-Up came because they failed six times. So 7-Up meant six down. 
and seven now up. That's how the name came. Six times. If you had come at the fifth time, you would advise the man and say, look, as a co-brother in this, in this financial thing, you are not going to make it. After five times, you should quit. Ah, rejoice not over me, my enemies, that though I fall, I will rise again. God brought a prophetic word for someone. I know that they demolished your house years ago, but till now you have not built. You have been given flimsy excuses while time is going. It's time to make up your mind. You have a plot of land, but you are waiting until the day you have 30 million. You will never build. The one million you have, go and buy sharp sand with it and pour it. Let the devil see that, that signature of God's favor there. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Who said you cannot rise? There is good in every land. There are principles of forcing your portion to come to you. He says, out of the earth comes bread. The profit of the earth is for all, that even the king is fed from it. The fear of the past. Growing up in ministry, I saw several people fail in ministry around me. Some did not even do anything. At best, there was almost nothing at all. I said, no, this thing can be different. I read in my Bible that the same Lord is rich unto all. I read in my Bible that from where thou art, lift up your eyes. You don't need to get to the future. Let your eyes just get there. From where you are, you may not be able to move there, but you can lift your eyes. Are we together? From where thou art, lift up your eyes. For someone you came to church today to stop giving excuses about yesterday. It's time to stop giving excuses about yesterday. I repeat, it's time to stop. I sympathize with you. Yes, I know that you were abused growing up. I do not endorse that. Yes, I know that you could not move forward because maybe you lost your loved ones. I sympathize with you. But hey, close that chapter and begin to move forward. The fear of yesterday. Someone pray while you are seated in the name of Jesus. Yesterday, I wave you goodbye. I wave you goodbye once and for all. I wave you goodbye. You will not kill my today and my tomorrow. Someone prophesy the failures of yesterday, the limitations of yesterday, the troubles of yesterday. As at yesterday, I was a sinner, but I'm no longer a sinner. As at yesterday, I was lazy, but I'm no longer lazy. As at yesterday, I was a failure, but today I'm no longer a failure. As at yesterday, I was spiritually ignorant, but today I'm no longer ignorant. Yesterday, stop relieving your life in my today. You have had your share in my destiny, and you remain there. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. Someone say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Is, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus would have maintained that statement. And now even though anointed by the spirit, he would have said, ah, I remember oh, when I was growing up, somebody said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Go and read your Bible and see the kinds of people that God raised to become champions. Read their backgrounds. The things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, that they are for our learning. It is not unusual for people to laugh at you when you start. You are not the only one they laughed at. They laughed at every champion. So don't take it personal. Throw it in your yesterday. And face your front to move. If you fail, fail honorably. While you are using... God did not give you the gift of today to regret over yesterday. That is an unwise use of time. Is someone learning? The second level of fear, second dimension of fear that you must conquer is the fear of the present. The fear of the present. Now we have dealt with the fear of the past. The fear of the present. Is someone learning? The fear of the present slash the fear of being controversial uh -huh. the fear of being controversial I can tell you this by the spirit dear people everyone who has lived an uncommon life 
is also one who has sustained the courage to be controversial. Naturally speaking and psychologically speaking, there is an emotional comfort that comes with looking good in the eyes of men. There is an emotional comfort that comes with status quo. There is an emotional comfort that comes with looking good in the eyes of people. But great people are those who will defy whatever it is provided they know they are walking based on scripture with the integrity of God in their heart. They will press forth. And you see the truth is that once you see the consistency versus the result, you will join them in the future. Their stability and their sustainability will eventually attract you. Listen to me. You must conquer the fear that comes with the present. What will people say? Nobody has ever done this kind of thing in Abuja. What will people say? Colonel Sanders at age 78 or thereabout, retired from the army, just sat down and found out that he had a recipe for chicken and he was doing it and he liked it. Nobody signed any form that will buy your chicken. He could as well have been a total failure. And people will say, old man, carry the honor you got from army and return back and die in peace. But the guy refused. Think whatever you have to think, I am starting. And he started what we know today as KFC. Every time you line up to buy chicken, remember it was courage that made you line up today. That even after the man is long gone, you still cannot resist the fruit of his courage. Jeremiah 1. Is someone learning? Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 7 and 8. This was the Lord speaking to the young boy Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1 from verse 7. 7. 7. Now look at this. He told Jeremiah as a young boy, he says, when, right from when you were in your mother's womb, I called you and I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. But the boy was afraid and he said, ah, Lord, don't say that because I am a child. Verse 7. But the Lord said unto him, verse 7 now, please keep 7. Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Verse 8. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Be not afraid of their faces. There are lots of people who are failures and mediocres, and their face can be so intimidating, they can make you leave what you are doing that is right and become a failure. You have to conquer the fear of being controversial. Every vision speaks at the end, not at the beginning. Wanting a vision to speak at the beginning is a waste of time. Listen, we live in a world, respectfully speaking, especially our world today, where we are overly, we are overly conscious of our reputation, my ego. I don't want to hurt anybody. Whether you are Jesus or Satan, you are still not free. As far as being perceived to be controversial is concerned, we talk about Jesus, we talk about Satan. Anyone in between, you must also face the share of it. There are many people who cannot do great things because they are afraid. Now, do all you can within the, the power of God given to you to maintain a blameless, a great, and an exceptional life. But can I tell you this? Living your life based on people's scripts will be a disaster. I repeat, living your life based on people's scripts. Do not make yourself a victim of people's, they write a script and give you to live it. Uh-uh. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.